my name is Sergio Silva. I'm a PhD student at Utah University. And uh, today I'm feeling very strange because uh, I was recently in London and uh, I didn't went to the Houses of Parliament. And today I'm feeling like I'm on the Houses of Parliament uh, with people all over me. And uh, so it's quite confusing not to be in front of you. So I decided to move here instead of being there. That is more comfortable there because you have the presentation in front. But I'll try to do it from here. In the way that I'm more used. So I'm going to start with the, the roadmap of my presentation and uh, uh, first I'm going to give you the motivation, what's motivated our work, what we are doing right now and then uh, after uh, the motivation I'll give you some introduction, what is the project itself, what it consists and after we we'll talk about the micro, the micro mouse project, uh, the MEM kit that is um, this robot that you can see here, final product. And uh, then we'll we'll talk about the, the library itself, uh, the manual, and uh, we have some conclusions and future work. Okay, so we have this very nice image uh, for motivation. And um, I believe this image uh, shows what uh, young people think about uh, studying STEM courses, uh, science, technology, uh, engineering and uh, mathematics courses. Uh, when they think about uh, uh, a student that is on high school, they think, uh, okay, he's uh, my head is banging, this is very difficult. So what is happening today is that almost most of the, the, the young people uh, in, in Portugal are evading these areas. They are escaping. They don't want to go to, to STEM courses. They, they try to, to avoid them because they think mathematics is difficult, engineering is difficult. <coughs> and we have to change the mentalities. And, uh, we have to do that in a way that, for example, when you see these three students here, uh, you see that they are with the joy faces. They are doing <coughs> mathematics, they are doing engineering, they are doing physics, they are doing a lot of engineering job when, when they are over there. They are on the contest. Okay? And everything that they do, involves mathematics, physics, but it's not clear for them that is mathematics, that is physics, that they are doing. They are doing something that amuses them. That's our motivation, to have uh, a contest that at the same time motivates students for these kind of areas. Because in the future, when they have to decide, should I go to high school, study engineering, or I, should I go study uh, language or other course, we want them to come to our area, to science, to technology, to mathematics, uh, because the future is there. And basically, the Micro Mouse project involves a lot of areas, different areas, and uh, the, the Micro Mouse itself is a, it's a contest uh, with uh, this kind of track. It's a, a maze, uh, it's a, a big maze, 4x4. Four four. Uh, I, I had time to, to, to build it here. <laughs> I had a lot of time waiting, so I could have built one. Uh, I had it on my car. Uh, I, I thought in building a small one to show you, but I can show you, for example, a wall of this maze is like this, and you have 18 by 18 walls like this. So it's a big, a big maze and uh, the idea around the, the contest is that uh, when the contest starts itself, the students have to put the mouse on one corner, like that, and after that the mouse has to be able to navigate itself to the center. Okay? The exit of this maze is the center of the, of the maze itself. 
So it's more difficult than just follow a wall, because if you follow the traditional approach to, to, to solve a maze, what you do, you, you put your hand to one wall, and you just go, 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 and you find the exit. Even if the exit is the entrance, you will find it. Uh, that's always possible if the uh, exit is on one side of the, the, the maze. But in the center, that, that's different. Because it's very easy if uh, the maze has uh, a place that you can turn around always. If you are doing a thing like that, uh, following a wall, left or right, then you're going to be following always the wall and never get on the exit. So that's the difficulty of, uh, of this maze. Uh, but besides finding the center of the, the maze, uh, the robot should be able to do another thing. That is, come back to the beginning and then do it very fast. After knowing the, the track to the center, you have to do it <coughs> as fast as possible. And uh, the world record today stands for uh, Japanese um, Nagata. I believe mean, the name is like this, I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, he's a professor and uh, he is able to navigate from <coughs> that point to the center of the maze in 4.6 seconds. That's quite an astounding velocity. Uh, that's why it's a world record. Uh, Portuguese uh, uh, best time uh, established this year. It's about 35 seconds. It's a lot more. So we have a lot to learn to, to get there. And um, the idea of the contest is not only to be a contest. Okay? What we want to do is, okay, so we build first of all a kit that we can uh, provide for students, uh, uh, second grade students, uh, even lower grade students, we can provide the kids. We have workshops like the ones over there, teaching how the maze itself works, how uh, the kind of solutions that uh, is involved on solving this kind of problems. Uh, over there, also over there, you can see there's a lot of young uh, people over there, because we are trying to reach even uh, lower uh, grades like primary school students uh, in order them to, with a graphical interface to be able to, to participate on this contest. And the contest is just a bonus because uh, everybody likes a good contest, everybody likes competition, that's what motivates students to, to be better than the others, uh, but uh, they all we have the same weapon on their head. They all have the same kind of robots. What is going to beat from one to the others is going to be the algorithm that they build to get to the center faster than the others. Okay. So, we decided to create a kit and to create the kit itself the micro mouse robot. We decided to use a platform, the, the, the micro, the Arduino platform. Uh, that's an Arduino Leonardo. Uh, basically, because it's simpler. Uh, the Arduino was uh, a project built uh, in 2005 by Max Novianzi in Italy, and um, they built it because they they want to give uh, classes to students. In, in one month, they want to teach them electronics, they want to teach them a lot of stuff. And they have to have a platform that is easy to learn. And so they, they build the, the Arduino platform. And uh, there's a growing community uh, around the world, uh, around the Arduino platform. So we decided that this is the good platform to have our robots, because students can easily acquire the knowledge to program it. Uh, but uh, over here you can see there's the Arduino and there's the drivers for uh, the Arduino. Uh, we, we use uh, uh, Darlington transistors to, to, to send uh, a beam of light, infrared light, uh, to the walls and then the, the beam is reflected back. 
to use it to do this kind of uh, transmission because it's very narrow. So uh, we, 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 I know that if it's pointing in this direction, it's going to be for only the reflection from that part. And we also use it uh, for measuring distance uh, to the wall so we can travel uh, around the walls very easily. And, uh, sorry, uh, we use these kind of motors, stepper motors, because they are easy to understand how they work for young students. Uh, it's easy to, to, to sell them that uh, after 200 paces, uh, you have one complete lap. So it's easy for them to understand. So it's easy for them to also translate this in kinds of distance and even to facilitate them uh, more the, the job, uh, that's uh, the, the kit itself, this is the 3D image, this is the final product. And uh, we decided to do a library and this library uh, allows them with easy instructions to say just move 18 centimeters and the robot will move 18 centimeters. Just turn right, it turns 90 degrees right. So, in order to facilitate the entrance of lower level uh, students to, to this kind of uh, kits. And uh, we also, uh, with the kits, we provide uh, several examples, just simple move forward, test the sensors for distance, uh, turn left, turn right. And then we have the advanced uh, algorithms that allows them to participate you won't allow them to, to win anything, probably, because if everybody goes with the same algorithm, there's, there's no way, they, only by chance they can win. But it's a basis for this day, day to start, because what we realize is that when a, a student goes to a contest, if they cannot even participate, because the algorithm that is too complex, it, it's it's not appealing for, for students. So we, we, we did a lot of work on this. We have the flood field uh, algorithm that is one of the more, more complex algorithms. It's like uh, to have... Imagine that we have this room, you have to get to the center. If I drop water on the, on the walls, the water will go to the center because the, the room is like this. Uh, going down to the center. That's the flood field uh, idea of uh, getting the center. We have the, the, the traditional right wall follow to get to the center. And finally, we have a random next move. We, we decided to use it just to show that even with random decisions, it's possible to find the, the center sometimes. <laughs> sometimes it's very near the center, like, OK, if he turns right, he enters the center and it turns left. <laughs> but it's funny, it's a, a funny algorithm and, and you, young kids usually like this kind of uh, algorithm. Then we, we start writing the manual and the manual is quite complete from zero to uh, the, the basics and, and all, all. And we also did some uh, graphical interface with uh, Scratch in order to provide the analysis of the algorithms to, so they know how to work. And in conclusion, uh, this kind of contest that in, in, in exists in Japan, in the USA and in uh, many other places is a nice way for students to start uh, being involved in STEM very soon and uh, we hope that this contest will help them to, to be future engineers. Uh, the, the first stages, uh, like spreading kit development workshops and annual competition, are being uh, done. Uh, we have the three competitions till now, so it's quite, quite nice. And uh, all stakeholders, uh, students, uh, teachers, they are all very interested on, on this. And Future work, we, we started to develop right now a graphical interface with the Block Arduino uh, in order to allow even uh, first grade students 
to to enter this this kind of uh, project. So uh, I have to acknowledge uh, Inestec and uh, Global Tronic in Utah. And uh, thank you very much for your attention now.